morning, good morning, good morning. Hi there, everyone. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to my morning devotion. Okay, so today we're going to talk about salvation. So just so you know, this is so important. I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the United States and every everywhere that you celebrate your Thanksgiving. I want to say happy Thanksgiving. May you stay safe out there. May God take care, may God take care of um, everything you do. May God take you out in your gathering and may God bring you back safely. Please celebrate this day with all cautious, cautiousness, okay? Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you this day. We thank you this day of thanksgiving. We thank you for the life you give us we thank you for the people who are supporting us we thank you for our neighbors we thank you for our military we thank you for just everything we thank you for your son jesus christ we thank you for the gift of life we just thank you god without you where else can we go Hallelujah. We thank you for those who are watching and we thank you for everyone who is going to be online. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So today I want to talk about baptism. I mean, I want to talk about and how baptism is going to be one of the topics. So I'm going to be talking about salvation. What do you know about salvation? What is salvation? Salvation is not a doctrine. So what is salvation and what does it mean to follow Jesus Christ? That's what we're going to be talking here today. And I want you to really pay attention. Because many of us do not know about salvation. We do not understand the process. I talk to many people and you get different answers. So let us today participate by watching if you watch watching me let me know wherever you're watching me from and i want to thank god for watching today you're going to learn something that is going to be in you that no one will take it away from you may god bless you as you watch what is salvation please if you're watching i want to know where you're watching from may god bless you this blessed day that we come together to thank god the best place to be is in the presence of God. I want to know if you were here, and I believe God will bless you. At the end of this, we're going to pray. I'm just going to spend like 30 minutes, which is not a huge time before God. So what is salvation, and what does it mean to follow Jesus Christ? So I'm going to break this down. Salvation is receiving the forgiveness of your sins that you yourself do not deserve so salvation is the entire sacrifice that you must endure as a follower of jesus christ it's a way of life people are going to abuse you people are going to say all kind of things about you when you start following jesus christ some of them are going to call you antichrist just because you have accepted to follow Jesus Christ. They're going to ask you questions that does not matter. So I want you to really understand this. Why must I follow Jesus Christ? Why? So in John chapter 14 verse 16, the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So different versions, they said, Similar thing, which is the same thing, 
that no one come to the Father except through me. That is Jesus Christ himself said it. And so we know that one day, one day we are going to go back to God. And that is why we decided to follow Jesus Christ. To believe in his name. To accept him as our Lord and Savior. To go through water baptism as he, as he went. And to start live a victorious life with fear and trembling. So the first step to follow Jesus is to repent and confess of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is a declaration. It is something that you have to be old enough and make that decision by yourself. You have to make the decision by yourself. You have to denounce Satan Denouncing Satan is just denouncing your sins. Say, today I repent from my old ways. So it, that is the first step of following Jesus Christ. So, um, so what is this first step? So you, you, you can't just follow Jesus Christ without making that declaration. You can't just go to church and every day you, you are going to church and you go to church by yourself without making that declaration. You have to. You have to. And that is a step before the water baptism. So that is the first step. So first in First John chapter 1, verse 9 in NIV, the Bible says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So when you confess your sins, you confess your sins to Jesus Christ. He died for our sins. He died for us so that we may live again through confession. So that is the first step. In Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, from verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded like and having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Or vain conceit. I'll break this down. Let me read the chapter completely. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. Verse 5. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset of Christ Jesus, who, being in, 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 in very nature, God did not consider e equality with God. So he, being in the same nature with, with God, but did not consider equality um, with God. So Paul, it's Paul that was talking here. So, verse 6, who being in, in, in very nature, in the nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. So, Jesus did not use God for his own advantage. Most of the time, he talks about God. He talks about God as his father. He said, if you have seen God, you have seen me. So, we should not use the church as a way of abusing other Christians. That because you attend this church, you will go to hell. Because you do not attend my church, you will not go to heaven. So, this is Paul warning the churches. And this is what we see today. Someone said, oh, you're going to that church? Okay, you must come to my church. My church is the best one. So, I want you to understand this. 
so um verse 7 rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of the servant jesus used himself as a servant he brought himself down and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death he was obedient look at the son of god when to john the baptist to john the baptist ask him to be baptized he did not question john the baptist he did not ask him where do you have all this knowledge today people question other religion and i know jesus said it he is the only way he is the truth and the light he said it no one comes to the father except through him but jesus is not to condemn so let me finish here with, in, with this verse 9. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God, the Father. So Jesus gave glory to god the father he give god all the glory everything that happened to us everything we do what i do today i give glory to god so this is part of our salvation so the second step of salvation if you are watching i want to thank you Thank you so much, Manu Manuela, for stopping. Hey, Katieli, God bless you for stopping. God bless you. We're going to pray at the end of this sermon. Today is a blessed day. I want you to be thankful to God and to be thankful to our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to stay put, stay calm. Do not be, do not be in haste. And please don't be in haste. Okay, so the second step of salvation, or let me say the second step to follow Jesus is to accept water baptism. Anyone who accepts Jesus as his Lord and Savior can be baptized even the same day. Jesus himself went to be baptized by John the Baptist. He who has no sin, he has no sin Yet, he became humbled enough to be baptized by John. So, baptism not only means that you have sinned, but going to baptism doesn't mean that you have sinned. It is a declaration. So, water baptism is a clear commitment and acceptance to follow Jesus Christ after you have repented of your sins and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Water baptism is a symbolic process and a symbolic representation of Jesus' way of life. So remember I said Jesus went to John the Baptist to ask him to baptize him, Jesus. He had no sin in him. But yet, he took water baptism. Again, water baptism is an act of faith. So when you go through the process of water baptism, is to apply that faith to that name Jesus Christ. Is to believe in his name. And it is the complete obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you can't accept, you can't say you are a believer or you accept Jesus Christ without accepting water baptism. This is so important. But I, I want to make, there's a point I want to make here very clear to everyone who is watching. Okay? I have four points to make, which I want you to pay attention, which so many churches, some churches, or they just stick on that one point about water baptism. 
but I'm going to read from Romans chapter 6, verse 4. The Bible says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into, into depth, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So go, taking water baptism is a way of bearing your old life and to receive a new life. It's a symbolic representation. Jesus did it. And when he came out of the water, we heard the voice of God. The voice of God said, this is my beloved son. So, water baptism is important. So the Bible says in verse 4 of Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. In Acts chapter 2 verse 41, the Bible says, Those who accepted those who accepted his message, Paul was preaching. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to the number that day. So people listened to the message that Cornelius, Paul, they went to places and preached the word of God. And people listened to the word of God. They made a commitment and then they accept water baptism. The first step of your salvation is to accept Jesus Christ, is to make that commitment to follow Jesus Christ. That is the first step where you are being saved. So, let me make this point. Baptism does not forgive your sins. Baptism does not forgive your sins. Jesus is the only one who can forgive your sins. Two, baptism does not save you from sin. Doesn't mean that when you baptize, you are saved from your sin. We have seen people who have been baptized and they backslide it and they go back and they start living their life. So baptism does not save you from your sin. There are churches that believe that the only point that is consider you being saved is after baptism. That is wrong. You can come and challenge me. The Bible made it clear. It is only Jesus that has the power to forgive sin. And Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Water baptism does not forgive your sin. Water baptism is not the only step that saves you or that makes you a believer of Christ Jesus Christ is not the only step. So anyone that says that baptism is, is, is the only step that qualifies you as a believer, no, you have to accept Jesus Christ first. You have to do water baptism. You have to start living a victorious life, working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Lastly, baptism is not baptism is, is, is a commitment that affirms our belief and connection to the body of Christ. So it just makes you stronger. So I already explained that it's a point where you you go under the water, you, which therefore means you bury your sin, and then you come out of the water which therefore means you receive a new life. And the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. The Bible says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Let no one abuse you. Let no one crucify you. Say you will go to hell. 
No one has the power to judge except Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read from Acts chapter 8 from verse 35. This is so important. This is so important. And it's good that you know. It's good that you know. In Matthew chapter, let me first of all read from, in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, the Bible says, Jesus instructed the disciples clearly, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe the things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. So it is a way of life. Jesus promised that he is going to be with us if we start living a victorious life. He said, go ye to the world, to the world, and preach the gospel. That is what we are doing. That is what I am doing. But in the course of this journey, some will abuse you. Some will say all kinds of things against you. It is not new. They said that to the disciples. They said that to Jesus Christ. The Jews, the Pharisees, they thought that they were just the most righteous people on earth. But Jesus exposed them. So baptism is a declaration that you are a born again Christian and a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a, it's like a confession that you have to make. It is a confession of your faith in Christ. And, and it is, it's, it's a commitment to continue to follow Jesus Christ. When you accept Jesus Christ, it's one step. When you go through water baptism, it's another step. When you start living a victorious life, it's another step. So this is our way of salvation. It's an everyday thing. But let no one crucify you and tell you, that this is the only step that qualifies you to be saved. I was talking with somebody on Sunday. I have a program that I do every Sunday. And he said, the only true church is the church of Christ. See, all other churches, 99% of, of, of churches do not obey what the Bible is saying. Self-proclamation. And I'm saying this because that is flat wrong. So, the third step to follow Jesus is to start living a victorious life. Hallelujah. A victorious life is to continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That is the third step. And that is the victorious way of life. Hallelujah. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. A victorious life is to fulfill the purpose of God. Verse 14, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warp and crook generation. The generation that we live is a crook generation. Then Paul said, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky you will shine in this generation like stars in the sky as you hold firmly as you hold firm to the word of life which is the word of god and then i will be able to boast on the day of christ that i did not run or labor in vain a victorious life 
is a way of life. To do the things that will keep you on track as you believe, as you trust in Jesus Christ, as you hold firm unto his name. Hold firm unto that name and your lifestyle will not be in vain. And I want to say this now. Let me say this now. Everyone is born of God. And everyone is going to witness the second coming of Jesus Christ. But we are going to witness is from different locations. Some of us, maybe many of us, are going to witness is maybe in heaven. Some are going to witness it maybe in hell. Some are going to witness is life on earth. So you are going to witness it. The things you refuse to believe, one day you are going to see it clearly, but you are going to be from a different location as you witness it. At that point, nothing will change. Nothing will change, just like the days of Noah. When the flood started coming, it was too late to change, to make a decision. Today, I encourage you to follow Jesus Christ, to accept Jesus Christ, to denounce your bad ways, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He himself said he is the only way. No one comes to the Father except through me. What will stop you from going back to the one who created you? What will stop you to live a victorious life? What will stop you to accept Jesus Christ? So following Jesus Christ is not a doctrine. It is a way of life for all believers in Christ Jesus Christ. So when you believe in Jesus, you have to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. In Mark chapter 16, verse 16, Jesus said, Then Jesus said, Go into the world, go everywhere and preach the message of good news to, um, to one and all. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever refuses will be damned. In other words, will be condemned. So Jesus do not condemn anyone. It is our disbelief and our, refuse, our refusal to acknowledge him will condemn us. Let no one condemn you, even if you have not made up your mind. It is a work of the Spirit. Then my prayer for you is that you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you will follow the footsteps of Jesus. He himself went to, the, to John the Baptist to be baptized. So baptism by submission is a symbolic representation of Christ's burial and resurrection which symbolized the barrier of your old life as you went down as you went down under the water and resurrection of your new life as you come out of the water so you are now you are now a brand new christian so you now have a brand new life in christ in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I'm going to read finally from that Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him, and told him the good news about Jesus Christ. Philip went and was preaching about the good news of Jesus Christ. As Philip traveled, he was preaching to the Ethiopian Enoch. As he traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the Enoch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? So look at the man who just received the word of God and he believed in water baptism and he saw water and he said what can stop him from being baptized. 
and, and he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you this morning. I want to thank you for this Thanksgiving day. We thank you for your wonderful gift of life. We want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. As we come, as we come before you this morning, we want to thank you because every good thing comes from you. As we celebrate this day, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that there will be peace. We pray for safety. We pray for protection. We pray for peace everywhere. We pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will be, will be sprinkled everywhere so that there will be peace, so that there will be safety along the road, along the beaches, along the airways, along the airports, and along different homes as they celebrate this day. We pray for safety. We pray for peace. We pray for protection of life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I know everyone is happy, is happy to celebrate this day, but the turkey are not happy because many of them are going to be gone. They want to thank God for this day. I want to thank everyone who stopped by. I want to bless you, and I thank you so much for being part of this morning devotion. May the Spirit of God be with you. May the grace of God be with you. May his peace be with you. May the shalom of our Lord Jesus Christ, that peace from above, be with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you all for stopping. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that anyone who is sick, may you, O oh God, send your Holy Spirit to touch them. Anyone who is going through issues, may you, God, send your Holy Spirit to to heal them. Father, we pray that you find solution to their problems. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you bring peace in their relationship. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that may you, O oh God, release power from heaven to, to go against the, their enemies, Lord. We pray that the, your face will shine on their way. We pray that you build an aura of protection around them. And may you grant them the solution that they are looking for. Father, we thank you even as we come closer to the end of this month. May you bless your children. May you prepare them for the month of November, or December. Father, we pray that nothing bad will happen to them. We pray that the peace of God will be with them. We pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will protect them in their going out and their coming in. May God bless you. May God give you the desire of your heart. May God bless you so that you know how to handle your relationship. May God bless you with the wisdom that you need to handle your friends. There is a way to treat your friends. May God bless you to love others. May God bless you to take away hate from your own self. May God bless you to love your own self. Love begins from your own self. Do not discredit yourself. May God bless your family. May God bless your coming generation. In Jesus' mighty name. For those who are going to write their exam, you are blessed ahead of time. For those who are traveling, may God bless you with any mercy. For those of you whose family members are sick, may God grant you that healing. May God grant you that healing. May God grant you that healing. Through you, you may stand in the gap of your family member and God is going to heal that person. I pray. I pray for someone who is sick. I pray for my younger cousin in the name of Jesus Christ. I lift him up in Jesus' mighty name. I proclaim healing in his life at this moment in Jesus' mighty name. I command that sickness to go now. I command it by the power of the name Jesus Christ, which by the mention of that name, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess in heaven and on earth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command that sickness to die. May you live. May God give you the strength and the energy to live. And may God bless you with many, many more years. And whenever the devil see you coming, the devil will flee in many directions. Because God has blessed you already. 
when God's face is ahead of you and behind you and around you, the devil will flee every time the devil sees you. May you have that power that your enemy will not, will never withstand you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Thank you very much for being here this morning. I want to bless you. This is exactly 35 minutes, minutes since I started this devotion. And I want to thank God for giving me the energy and the strength. Katiali, I prayed for you. And I know God has, has, has answered your prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bye. I'll see you guys tomorrow. If God asks me to come, I'm going to come. I listen to the voice of God. I do the work of God, not by myself, but by the will of God. And I pray God bless you also to give this good news to someone. If you did not start watching this video, please find time and watch this video. It's about what is salvation. So you understand this. So nobody can tell you lies about salvation. Even in the nation that we live, some people try to frame this word of God to condemn other people, to see other people as if they do not even qualify. Some people will tell you that you are not qualified to go to heaven. They will say all kind of things, but do not believe that. Jesus Christ died for you. He paid the price on the cross. He wants you to be saved. Anyone who abuse you or condemn you, allow the scripture to work in their life. The Bible says if anyone judge you, God himself will judge them. So if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and anybody try to say evil things against you, anyone who judge you, the Spirit of God, which is the Word of God, is judging that person. Amen. Because the battle is not yours. The battle is God's battle. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Hallelujah. May God bless you. I want to thank you, Manuela, for stopping. And I want to thank you, everyone who stopped by. Um, for those of you that we made your gift, um, some of you will be receiving it by tomorrow and some maybe by Saturday. Somebody will call you all and then start giving you the gift that we promise you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Bye-bye.